All right. Well, the number of people joining us is really slow, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon again, and welcome to the 2021 Lady Session of Annual Conference. I'm so glad to see that so many of you have joined us. It's a good day to gather. And it's also the nicest day of the year so far, so I appreciate that you're here with us. Uh, one instruction I want to give before we go too much further is that if you need uh, closed captioning at the bottom of your screen, or maybe at the top if you have an Apple product, there's a, a live transcript with a little CC icon. If you click on that, you'll be able to enable uh, a transcript. Uh, you'll see the words across the bottom of your screen as we talk, speak them. There's also uh, Spanish language interpretation available if you need that. And that's the ne icon next to it for interpretation. Okay, well, let's start off with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we know that you are with us as we gather together once again in this electronic fashion. We ask your blessings on this gathering. Be with our speaker as she brings us a message to enlighten and challenge us. May her words touch each of us according to your will. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, like always, we're gonna start with some music. You can sing along, hum along, or just close your eyes and listen. Church Tabernacle Choir, directed by Mr. Thomas Marsden. Thanks also to the team that put that video together. We get one of those every week at my church. All right. You know that we did not have a lady session last year due to the abbreviated nature of annual conference. This year, we're here via Zoom in another abbreviated electronic format. I just couldn't see going two years without a lady session. Here's what we're going to do today. We have a great guest speaker who I will introduce shortly. We will introduce the 2021 class of new certified lay ministers. And we have a wonderful brief video and information about the Laity Academy. That's the plan. So let's do it. The Reverend Dr. Jackie King is an elder of the United Methodist Church ordained in the Texas Annual Conference. Known as a pioneer for connecting technology and faith community building, 
by launching an online experience in 2007. Currently, she serves the United Methodist Church by partnering with connectional teams to create virtual events that focus on leading online engagement, by creating digital footprints, by launching a digital strategy, by prayer, Bible studies, and trainings to equip leaders to effectively act in hybrid environments. Her coaching expertise encourages lay and clergy leaders to develop ministry action plans that reach new people and expand virtual discipleship systems. She promotes team building strategies for expanding missional outreach. She previously served with Discipleship Ministries as the Director for U.S. Annual Conference Relationships and the Director of Leadership for Congregational Vitality. In those roles, she managed leadership development for local congregations, developed online webinars for lay and clergy leaders, and implemented the annual conference strategy by developing collaborative partnerships between discipleship ministries and U.S. annual conference boards and district leadership teams. Her targeted ministry areas include developing strategic conversations with district superintendents and directors of connectional ministries groups, design team member for the annual conference superintendents and district directors of connectional ministries training event, resourcing ethnic leadership teams, building intentional de development systems, and promoting community engagement. She is a native of Philadelphia and returns often, speaking at a variety of events. Many of you may have heard her before. I met her at a meeting of the Association of Annual Conference Lay Leaders and knew immediately she would be a great speaker for a lady session. Here we are. First, some details. Dr. King will take questions following her presentation. Questions should be submitted on the Q&A section of Zoom, not the chat, the Q&A section. Dr. King's slides are available on the conference website. A link to those slides will be in the chat section of Zoom and a follow-up email after annual conference. I think that's it. Dr. King, the Zoom is yours. Thank you so much, David. It's a blessing to be with uh, the Eastern Pennsylvania Annual Conference team. Uh, David and I have um, journeyed along the way, uh, and it's just good to be with each of you, as well as the team that's behind the scenes, um, moving with slides and prayers. So our session today is going to begin with the I thought of what does it mean to come to the water? Uh, I'm going to share some thoughts from these three scriptures, Isaiah 55, 1, John 7, 47, uh, just 47, so it's probably 37 through 49, missed that one, and Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. So let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we come right now thanking you for this experience online, virtually. We thank you, dear God, for the move of the Holy Spirit and the virtual connection. And even just the relationships of, can we see one another? Can we hear one another? Are we reaching out to one another? So Holy Spirit, come move and have your way. And we thank you in advance for what is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, next slide, please. The scripture that we'll begin with simply says, come to the water. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. You have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Come to the waters. What does it mean for us to receive the invitation to come to the water? I want you to imagine where you have been over this past year. Places that you had planned to go and you didn't get a chance to go. Things that you wanted to do and 
weren't able to do because we were in a pandemic. And we're just emerging from not just one pandemic, but dual pandemics and just lots of things that are different, lots of things that are challenging, but still there's an invitation from God to come to the water. It doesn't say some who are thirsty, it says all who are thirsty. Have you ever been just thirsty? Maybe you walk the beach and you walked around your block or you finally able to take your mask off and you realize that you're perspiring and you're thirsty. Come to the waters. Think about it. Come to the waters. It's an invitation. Next slide. So when we get to the water, are you willing to allow yourself to ask the question, what are you thirsty for? Are we thirsty for God? Are we thirsty for community? I saw someone put in the chat, where's all of the pictures of the people? I can't see all the people. In this format, we're in a webinar shape and we don't get to see all the pictures, but we do know there's other people that God has brought together, the amazing laity of the Ah, the amazing laity of Eastern Pennsylvania. I know you've been involved with lots of different ministries. I keep in touch. This is where I'm home. This is home for me. So I always am looking for an opportunity to connect. And God has allowed me to experience Eastern Pennsylvania in so many ways, whether I've been face-to-face -face for an annual conference or celebrated the laity session in the past, meeting people, doing training, but simple things as, are we praying for one another? I never forget, I met a gentleman from the Poconos and when we met at this training, we were in the Eastern Pennsylvania area and we realized that we had the same anointing oil. We had the same heart to pray for one another. So when the question was asked, are we thirsty for God? And the scripture says, he who believes in me, as the scripture says, from the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So when we find those kindred spirits and we connect with one another, we see that the atmosphere is changing. And yes, we're still thirsty and we're thirsty for God. Will you come to the water? Whether you're at a local congregation that's just beginning to transition and come back into the building, whether we're in a hybrid situation, some people are online, some people are on the phone, other people are together. But the reality of it is we must stay thirsty for God. And as lay and clergy people, how are we praying for one another? I said to David, I never meet a stranger. I played, prayed in airplanes. I prayed in prayer circles. But one of the things that I'm willing to ask the question is not are only are we thirsty for God, but how can I pray for you? How can I connect with you? How can I be in relationship with you? Technology may not be your favorite place, but because God has allowed us to stay thirsty, we've learned how to use technology in this year that maybe we would have never reached out and connected with. So are we thirsty for God? The answer is yes, we are thirsty for God. And we continue to want the flowing rivers of living water to move and connect. So what do you do when you're thirsty? I get me some water. And I drink from the fountain that God gives to me in various different formats. But one of the ways that we can embrace that thirst is to still live in that space. The atmosphere is changing, but God needs us to remain in relationship. So when you answer the question, are we thirsty for God? And the answer is yes. How are you living and how are you moving forward? Next slide. So the scripture of John 7, 37 through 39, 
invites us to think about this. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the spirit whom, had, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Why is this important? Because here we are meeting an annual conference on the heels of Pentecost Sunday, on the heels of the Holy Spirit being forward, coming down into our very being. So this is the end of a festival. This is the end of a time, but it invites us because Jesus said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come and drink. Can anyone come and drink the water and the answer is yes. The thirst for God is real. We are thirsty and we are believing in a true and living God. We are thirsty and we are aware that God is moving. So this invitation is to all of us. As lay persons, this invitation is extended again to all of us. As a clergy in the United Methodist Church, I have spent more time as a lay person than I have in my clergy calling. But if I had not answered my call as a lay person, I might not have recognized my calling from God to move into my clergy call. But why is this important to all of us? Because every place I serve, I remind people God needs us to journey together. The rivers of living water is flowing from each of our hearts, our minds, and our soul. God has a vision for us. And when we are thirsty and we want to drink of that living water, what does it mean to come? And then once you've come, are you extending an invitation to invite other people to come with you? The thirst for God is real. Come and drink of living water. Next slide. So what does that look like here in Eastern Pennsylvania? How are we coming and thirsting? We're blessed to be the church. And Ephesians 2, 13 and 14 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ for he is our peace. When we thirst and we serve together, we are moving forward in lots of different ways. Whether we're in the partnership to build a Habitat house, whether we're part of a confirmation class, whether we're doing artwork for seniors, whether we're experiencing, there may be things that I did not see, but they're representatives of what it means to be thirsty and coming together as the body of Christ. But it also says here on this Asian, Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, many cultures, one voice. So we're standing together to promote equality and inclusion. We're standing together. We're fighting, we're marching, we're praying together but we're called to be a blessing and a blessing as a church together. So when you're thirsty and you say, well, I'm gonna come together, maybe your church came together at the food bank that had closed, but now that the restrictions are changing, you can connect and collaborate with another church because someone's now has gotten their vaccines or maybe your church is a location for vaccination. However it is, God is still calling us to be the church. 
So when we're thirsty and we say yes to Jesus and we come to the church, the body of Christ ought to be able to say, the waters are still flowing. Next slide. So what does that look like when the waters are still flowing? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So when we are hungry, yes, there are moments during this pandemic that have been horribly scary, challenging to our very bones. Not only has it challenged who we are as Christians, but challenged what we believe and how will we live out that belief. The sign says United Methodists stand against racism. Whether it was the death of George Floyd that got your attention, or whether it was the embattled situations where people are fighting one another that have never fought before, or whether it was an ideology that says this group won and this group lost. This scripture reminds us that blessed are those who are who hunger and thirst. It doesn't say hunger or thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you seeking righteousness? And how are you doing that together? Think about it for a moment. The day that you heard your church would not open its doors physically, but you would go to church online. If you're honest with yourself, you said, well, we might do this for two weeks, maybe a couple of weeks, but surely it won't last long. Why do I pause there? Because some of what had to be adapted and changed immediately, we had to come together as people of Christ because the Holy Spirit living water had not stopped flowing, but how we lived into our worship in our ministry in our community had to change because God said, I still need my people touched. Are you thirsty? Come to the water. Next slide. So when we came to the water, we had to recognize that everything at the water wasn't like it used to be. Even though we know things had changed, we had been in our own little spaces and certain things, we hadn't come together as community on an ongoing basis. We didn't know all the time what it meant to get involved and pray for this healing journey. We had to address things that we said, if it's not in our local congregation, oh, we may not have to worry about that. But God put come to the water on front and center and as lay and clergy and community, we had to come together and pray and be part of what will be ongoing, a healing journey like none other. So whether it was Black Lives Matter, whether it was marches for refugees, whether it was the National Week to come to the awareness that there are missing and murdered Native American women, whether it was about Asian Americans, Whatever has gotten our attention to cry out to God, we still need to come to the water because we're thirsty for a move of the Holy Spirit. We're thirsty for the living water of God. We're thirsty for healing and wholeness. We are thirsty for reconciliation. How are you involved in the healing journey, not only in your block, not only in your church, but the school, the civic community, politics and more. God is calling us to be uncomfortable 
and come to the living water. Next slide. So when you think about what it says, come to the water, you see the movement of water. You see what it thinks that you see in that water is a ripple. I want you to stand with this vision in your mind. God needs you to drop a pebble in the water. How many ripples will come from that water? How many people will no longer be thirsty because the pebble that was dropped in the water rippled far enough to reach them as living water? Hmm. Do you remember when you were very, very thirsty and you didn't believe that God's love was real and someone invited you to come and you experienced living water and then your testimony as a lay person, the faith that you have now, you've invited multiple, multiple people to come and experience living water. So why talk about it right now? Because for a moment, there's still gonna be hybrid worship. For a moment, there's still gonna be hybrid community engagement. God has not told us not to be involved and we must come to the water, get renewed and revived. Come to the water and be alive. Next slide. So what does it mean when we come to the water? What will happen at the water? First, we will come. Then we also recognize that we're thirsty and we need living water. And when that thirst is at a certain level, we will dwell with the Holy Spirit. So number one, we can be restored. Then when we will pray at the water, we will believe in the living water. We will hunger and invite others. Those who are hungry, you can get fed at this water. And then the ongoing healing keeps the water flowing. Will you come? Will you thirst? Will you dwell? Will you pray? Will you believe? Will you hunger? And will you see God for a healing touch at the water? Spirit of a living God, fall fresh on us so that you will know that the living water is still yet alive. So I thank you in advance for coming to the water. I thank you in advance for growing with the water. I thank you in advance for connecting with God because the water is real. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your water. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for reminding us and inviting us to keep coming to the water. It's been a hard season, but our faith in you, dear God, is about the living water. Touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every community, every zip code, every place in Eastern Pennsylvania annual conference and beyond. Touch the leaders, touch our lives together so that we will glorify you in all that we do. Come in Jesus name, amen. Well, David, are you ready for some questions? I, I am, Jackie. Thank you. That was uh, some powerful words. Uh, I don't see any questions yet in the Q and A. People will probably okay. be thrown by your presentation. But if you have a question, key it into the Q and A section, and uh, Dr. King will be happy to answer. I see some amens in there, but no questions. Amen to no question. Maybe you have slaked our thirst. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just want, people want this to be a short uh, lady session. Well, one of the things that I would just say um, in general, how important it is for us to be in relationship 
Um, and hearing God in terms of where does God need our, our communities to reach out in places that maybe we've not reached out before. And so in our visioning and in our time together, um, I, I, my biggest prayer for laity is not to ever stop dreaming. Um, there are things that God does through our relationship um, that we don't want to miss as uh, lay persons um, in partnership with our communities and the ministries that God has allowed us to do. I mean, in technology, we're able to now be in Zoom. But imagine all the people who couldn't drive in the past or didn't drive at night that are now on Bible studies um, because we're really intentional about reaching out to them. Yeah. So I celebrate with all the laity that have been part of these teams that says, don't forget Mr. Jones. I know he's up the street. Or um, have we talked to Mrs. Smith in the last two weeks? But the intentionality of your love is a representation of the living water. So I am yeah. truly grateful. Amen to that. I know we're reaching more people than we reached before. The the shut-ins, the homeless, the the frail, and, and uh, who used to maybe make their way to church once in a while, but we're reaching them every Sunday now, and and even more. We need to continue that. Uh, and we're we're not going back to the way it was. Nothing will ever be the same. But we've got to adapt to these new technologies and new ways of doing things. Okay, I see some questions in there. Okay. Um, oh, first one. Uh, you spoke of a dual pandemic. Can you be more specific about what you meant? The dual pandemic um, has been mentioned in a variety of um, news as well as the um, um, combinations of here in the United Methodist Church, the pandemic of COVID-19 and the pandemic of racism. Um, with everything that has occurred during this past uh, literally 12 to 15 month time period, depending on when you want to um, kind of put the calendar mark, but if you say March of 2020 and where we are now, it's been um, a, 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 just a, an extreme situations that have gone on. The other parts of that is how the body has reacted. Um, whether you look at the insurrection at the Capitol on um, Epiphany Day uh, of January 6th, or whether you look at um, things that have occurred in people struggling with embracing truth. We have to look at what has happened in our ethos and how we live as people. So the pandemics have revealed other things in our health areas. The pandemics have revealed other things in our relationships. But God's grace is calling us to, to move and still say, what does it mean for us to get past what that discomfort or that hardness to be who God needs us to be, to be authentic? Okay, I should have said that question was from Dennis Fisher. Uh, next question from Julie Perkowski is a bit of an observation. Thank you for the image of a pebble dropping. I don't have to pick up a pebble, just do the little things that, that matters too. And that's so very true. And, and, and God has something for all of us that is nudging. But sometimes we don't always see how far reaching it is. But then every now and then God will allow us to circle back and say, because you made a phone call and prayed for someone, they now had the courage to start a journey. So yeah. please never underestimate your small people. Here's one from Carol Ann. One of the challenges to our live streaming is finding creative ways to make those who are watching feel connected to the services instead of just viewing them. What are some of the ways that you interject into your live stream services and interject interactive experience? Well, a couple of different things, and I, I've actually shared this with David earlier, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it on. 
Um, I, I love um, glasses with different messages. <laughs> so I invite people to uh, take out different things and bring them in. Or I invite people to uh, look around their, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at the kitchen table in my house. So um, I invite people to not necessarily do a scavenger hunt, but invite them to bring an item to worship with them so they're in some spaces. The other things that I do involve creativity, you know, whether we put uh, recommendations into the chat or we share ideas, but creating spaces where community can still occur even when we're in technology. And last but not least, have a time, you know, we're all in different areas, but you know, the weather is changing right now. So invite people to go outside, take a picture with their camera um, and just be where they are. Um, but it also invites people into spaces. Like I've never seen so many kitchens um, in my whole time of being in ministry because, you know, I don't, you know, people say, well, do you use a, you know, green screen and all that? I'm like, no. People see my kitchen uh, and, you know, or my living room or things. So it's very, to me, um, inviting, but it's also authentic. So um, don't, we don't have to be perfect. Sometimes we just need to um, be willing to show up for God. Yeah, amen. Uh, Catherine Suffitch, Suffrage was wondering if this recording is available. Yeah, this, all of our recordings will be available on the website. I'm not sure about the specific format, but you can check on that uh, in a day or so. Uh, here's a question from our Bishop, Peggy Johnson. Any ideas of how we can help with people who don't have money for the technology? Yes, absolutely. We have an agency in the United Methodist Church called UMCOM. Um, I can share some notations, David, as well as with the Bishop, but UMCOM has uh, some, uh, they, they've had some Zoom grants, they've had some technology spaces, um, support things, particularly for rural communities. Um, and then they have some other smaller marketing pieces that help you launch or upgrade your website. So um, I've worked with a couple of their uh, local church marketing, um, but if you go to their website and you click on that, amazing tools um, to get us connected. And then they have a whole new free training online that um, helps us to get involved because we're all at different points in technology. So uh, UMCOM, www.umcom.org, I believe. Okay, a um, couple more. Uh, it's from Linda and Chuck. Can you give us some words of wisdom as we transition into the new? Some may be, some may run too hard and burn out and others may need help to get moving again and not even start. Many things are shouting for attention. Yes, they are. My thing is I use ministry action plans to help people vision together. And I always encourage people to recognize that Jesus had his posse, his team of 12. So when you are relaunching and reconnecting, you don't want to do this alone. So who are the two or three that will gather? Who are the persons that will come together to be your first Sunday team or your second Sunday team? Um, how will you flow differently? So the ministry action plan helps you to look at what does God need us to start or re-engage in right now? What's our timeline? But who needs to be at the table? So when I do visioning with lay and clergy teams, I talk about which, which, you know, who's your posse? Who's your people? Because if you've got 12 first Sundays, what would it look like if you had a team and they knew that they only served 12 times a year because they only served first Sunday? So when you're formulating and you're gathering or family ministries, create ways that allow you to still connect. The other part of this is some things are going to be face-to-face, -face, but if you never 
talk about what your digital footprint looks like, you will throw it away. And I don't want you to waste the season that God just gave us. So think about what will we still do face to face? What will we do online? What will we do face to face and online? Are we going to do a Sunday school class on Sunday online? But we're going to do a Wednesday morning chit chat virtually. So talk about what that means and then who can help you journey. But try to journey in small nuggets first. Four weeks, six weeks, and see what happens. And then you're adaptive. Yeah. But celebrate, always have a party, always have a way to say, yay. <laughs> All right, here's a question from Brenda Bins. We've embraced the technology at the church, but we have many in our area who do not have technology in their homes to connect with us. How are others addressing this problem? You know, no email, no internet, that kind of stuff. What I've done, um, I can also share with you, there's an article that Discipleship Ministries did that talked about access in a non-access space. So identify where your churches or your communities or your individual families, where can they connect? So you might still have a phone tree that your church bought years ago that can do calling. Or you say, well, we don't have that, but we can call one another. Well, here's the sick and shut in list. Are you utilizing that to build community? Well, these group of people call one another on Mondays and then this group of people will call people on Wednesday. So create ways that you will stay connected, but don't allow technology to say, well, we can't connect at all. Yeah. And then last but not least, wherever you are, there's still the place where people meet. You know, there's gatherings and people are starting to come out, mask, you know, vaccines are happening. So create ways for you to identify where will you be? And when, when I was in community, we called them meet us at. So you might send out a note that says every second Wednesday, we're going to be here. And whether it's five people will come, two people will come, just be consistent. So if you say you're going to be there Wednesday at 10 o'clock, be there with your coffee in conversation. You say it's going to be an hour from 10 to 11, make it an hour, pray out, but build community and build consistency. Okay, um, here's another one from Catherine Suffrage. Is there a program that tech deficient seniors can use to learn how to use smartphones, iPads and PCs in order to join together remotely, especially in rural areas where training centers are non-existent? It's a problem. Well, I have um, worked with churches, particularly um, those that are Wesley Foundations, college campuses, this is a way for them to do partnership. Most universities, there is um, financial um, funds that have to be used in community. So if you've never tapped into your community colleges, there are also people who, because of the work that they're doing in the college, um, and sometimes your high school, somebody put high school there, but because they have to do community service hours, this is a way to create a small curriculum to teach people. And then everybody's grandchild knows how to use that smartphone. This is a multi-generational ministry that you can launch. Yeah. My grandchildren know it's on my phone and I didn't know what was on my phone, but they know it. <laughs> Isn't that the yeah, truth? You have a so-and-so, and, -so and I'm like, yeah, well, this is what's on your phone. I was like, they also know how to use the remote on the TV much better than I do. So um, get the yeah. kids involved. All right. Oh, just a couple more just popped up. Uh, uh, this one is really more of a comment, but I want to read this aloud for the district superintendents that are in attendance, and I know they probably are. A group in our church believes that we should drop Zoom and just be in person. I don't agree at all. I'm with you. 
We are reaching more people than prior. Will the district put anything out to support keeping both? I'll just leave that there. I know we need we do need to support that, but I'm not sure how. So here's another question from Phil Hopkins. Church membership and attendance has long been steadily declining in the US, including mainline Protestant denominations like the UMC. What unique message does the current Methodist church have that can slow or reverse this trend in our communities? Boy, that's a little broader than your topic, but it's a timely question. Well, I think the important part is how are we contextually relevant? And utilizing um, technology, um, being face-to-face, -face, um, I, I think there's a variety of ways. But when it comes to the church, there are a lot of things that um, God needs us to um, embrace our community. So when our communities change, sometimes people stop going outside. I have, a, I have a message that I've done in all of my training. The word go stands for get out. Go and make disciples, get out of the building. So the pandemic um, invited us to technology. Um, I'm encouraging people not to lose the momentum that Zoom has uh, extended to us, but how will you build ministry using multiple resources? All right. All right, there's one last question. It's kind of on the same theme. As we see our in-person restrictions lessen, and this is from Vicka Jones, uh, uh, as we see our in-person restrictions lessen and we have more people back in our pews, how do we quiet the small amount of voices of those who don't understand why digital ministry isn't going to stop or phase out now? Or those who seem to think that live streaming is no longer needed. How can we get everyone on board with the notion that going back to what normal was isn't good enough? You're talking with the right person. I launched a church online in 2007, which is 14 years ago. Um, my first college ministry was an e-blast um, type of technology system. So all of my ministry has included both and, face-to-face -face and technology. They may not run simultaneously, but I've always believed you have to make room for multiple ways to reach people for God. So some things you might do both the face-to-face -face and Zoom, and then other pieces you will only do face-to-face -face and other things you will own. But you've got to create, what does that culture mean to your community? And when you define that, it's going to still stretch you in ways. And you said, well, we don't have enough people for that. We have all that God needs us to do to be the body of Christ, but we have to be willing to say, that may not be what appeals to me, but somebody came to know Jesus because of that invitation online. But when they are invited online and they come to the face-to-face, -face, Will you still love them as boldly as you have online? So all of us have to be willing to say, God is stretching us, but let us be relational and authentic to glorify God. Thank you, Dr. King. It's been excellent. I uh, appreciate you uh, being with us. Next on our agenda is Certified Lay Minister Introductions. For that, I'm going to turn the Zoom over to Mrs. Judy Enninger, who is the director of, of our conference certified lay minister program. Judy, the Zoom is yours. Thank you. Thank you, David, very much. Bishop Johnson, Dr. King, honored guests who we aren't able to see, but I know you're out there. Thank you for attending and beloved lay members of the annual conference, it is my pleasure to represent the Christ Servant Ministry Program and the Certified Lay Ministry Program today. And I am so glad to bring you this good news. 
the certified lay minister program not only survived the past year, but indeed they have thrived. The Holy Spirit met us at every corner and 10 virtually dynamic and committed Christ servant ministers completed the entire program, seven sessions online via Zoom with perfect attendance. This class has never been in person in the same room at any time, yet they forged relationships and bonds that are absolutely amazing. It is my privilege to introduce you to this Certified Lay Minister class of 2021. They are certainly virtually dynamic and committed. Their gifts to ministry are an inspiration. If you look at this picture on the screen, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's Sean Mack, but I want to introduce you to Caden Mack. He is our youngest Certified Lay Minister student. He would uh, be able to sit in with us from time to time, and we just give thanks to God for his patience. You know, God calls us in the stuff of life, and these people before you have very active lives. They are employed, they have families, they are active in their communities and churches, and they were able to do this program with gusto. I give thanks. Now, I would like to alphabetically introduce you to the 10 members of this 2021 CLM class. Denise Clark comes to us from St. John's United Methodist Church in Ivyland. That's the East District. Next, Carol Coleman, Bickley's New Beginning United Methodist Church, East District. Sabrina Delucio, Lima United Methodist Church, South District. Susan Kiefner, Wesley United Methodist Church, North District. Katina Kreese, West Lawn United Methodist Church, South District. Jacqueline Mack, Bickley's New Beginning United Methodist Church, East District. Sean Mack, Bickley's New Beginning United Methodist Church, East District. Marilyn Mason, Servants of Christ United Methodist Church, East District. Mike Reinert, West Lawn United Methodist Church, South District. And Sandra Stovall, Camper United Methodist Church, South District. This is the class of 2021, and we give thanks for their great gifts of ministry. You are invited to attend a service of recognition Sunday, June 6, 2021, via Zoom. Bishop Peggy Johnson will be preaching at four o'clock. There will be an invitation issued in the New Spirit, and it will be on the ChristServantMinistries.net website. We give thanks for all of the programs in Eastern Pennsylvania that have been available to the laity in this past year. And we especially give thanks for the Certified Lay Minister Program. And indeed seven students are in the current class. I know I've seen some of your names in the chat and I give thanks for these seven students who will also meet virtually in this next year to complete the program. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, Judy, to you for leading this effort and uh, shepherding all these people through the program. I Dave, tell my hand to these. Dave, I, I would add one thing. Okay. I had, I had 10 errands lifting <laughs> up my arms through this, if you know what I mean. These yeah. students were, they were the wind beneath my wings. Amen. All right. I tip my hat to those folks and, and they're at work and serving the Lord. Now we have a brief video produced by the Laity Academy team. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did.
Wow. Wasn't that something? Any dry eyes in the house? Let me tell you some more things about the 2021 Laity Academy. This year, there will be two sessions, a virtual session on the traditional first weekend in August, the 6th through the 8th. Currently, they have 11 course offerings, and it will be entirely over Zoom. There will be an in-person session October 1st through the 3rd. We currently have 15 courses, and that will be at various churches across the conference. There will be three courses in Spanish, Speaking One, Speaking Two, and Encounter with God Through Prayer. Registration information will be posted shortly, so visit the conference website. I hope you had the time to participate in one or both of the 2021 Lady Academy sessions. Speaking of sessions, this one is just about over. I want to thank Lindsay Cotman for her technical expertise and support. And I thank you for your attention and look forward to receiving your feedback on how well this has worked. Let me close now in a word of prayer. Gracious God, you have blessed us with this opportunity to gather and learn. You have also blessed us with the water of life. For both of these things, we thank you. Bless us now with your wisdom and grace. May we gather next year in person in our customary manner. Bring us back together tomorrow for our holy conferencing. May it be productive. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See you tomorrow at the annual conference business session. Be safe.